I've just done a few slides on how we think about social within content planning for the clients that you, we work with. And just hopefully if I run through, it might give some tips, it might be stuff that you already do. Content planning for social. So when we're working with clients, we obviously do a lot of content writing and a, a lot of content planning. So social media for us, we never wanted to be just a social media agency. And the way that I set Patrick Communications up was that it was a hub so that it was digital side of things with like web and social, but also then PR and then some marketing support so that it was all integrated rather than it being there's this and you have to pay this person to do this bit. And then there's this kind of element and you pay somebody else to do it. And that's how we were set up just because we set up the last recession. And also you can't do a lot of those things unless they are integrated. It's just a complete waste of time and effort. Um, so... Whenever we're thinking about social, we're usually thinking of it as a bit of a kind of an extension of of all the other stuff that we're we're doing for a client. And obviously, with the work that we do, so we work predominantly in the B two B space, but we do have some consumer clients as well. And for some of our clients, we do kind of social updates. For some of them, we just do the social updates for the content we're creating, um, so that they'll just get a snippet and they'll feed it into if they're handling their sort of social channels um, internally. But really. When we come down to it, we have four kind of key bits that we go through. And the first one is with everything that we're doing content planning, the customer and the target audience. And then we look at basically the business, the client's business. Uh, but we look at it from a long term point of view and also a short term, uh, more sales focused uh, point of view. And then we do the whole hashtags and which social channels and what pictures and, and stuff would go with it. So that's when we're planning things out, the natural sort of course of things that we would go through. When you're doing hashtag stuff, you do need to check the hashtags before you just add them on to anything that you put in from content point of view. And I have got an anecdote about this because we work with a data company. We've worked with them for a long, long time. but They do business intelligence. And when we started doing social for them, if you put hashtag BI in, it means something completely different uh, than business intelligence. It takes you into a whole world of tran transgender and sexual stuff. And, uh, you yeah, know, so you do make sure that you do your research as to kind of, I'm not just going to add this in and it just, yeah, it, it might be something completely different. So... Let's take each of those down um, just uh, so one by one. So the first thing that we do when we're thinking about content and what social things would come off of it would be all about what your customer might be interested in. And, and I've put at the bottom of this a part of your concept to recognise if your customer is new, established or a prospect because the messaging and the types of content and in turn the types of social that you might be putting out there will be slightly different. And again, I have an anecdote for this because I've actually had a client for us a few years back now he said, I follow you on LinkedIn. You've obviously done a brilliant job because we're obviously working. With you. That's great and the rest of it. But yeah, can we have some other stuff apart from sales? And I hadn't realised that but our, our scheduling had gone out. And instead of it being balanced, only one bit was really working. So it was good that he sort of pulled us up on it. But so you have to kind of think, you know, actually, if you're trying to do the brand awareness all well and good but you're probably talking to a kind of prospect or possibly a new customer whereas an established contact, uh, contact and somebody who's been working for a little while will want to hear other things from you otherwise it just sounds like noise or they'll switch off so try and think of who your um, customer profiles are or your brand um, personas if you like that's sometimes called Bex will know all about this um, and I have a think about what kind of things they would like to hear from you what kind of questions would they answer or feel quite comfortable answering? Um, whereabouts are they? So um, what I mean by that is, you know, sort of are they in the sort of LinkedIn space or are, are you working with them on a much more personal basis and actually Facebook? Are they very, very kind of graphics orientated because, it, you know, so Instagram or Pinterest even with, you know, you might have things there that you can sort of share or link up with. So you have to have a think about kind of which channels they might be on, but also... The other thing is, what kind of things might they be asking and what kind of things can you be saying to help them? So um, that, that getting that balance right, um, but with them as the main focus, is a, a really kind of core part of your sort of building your strategy, I would say. Because otherwise, what tends to happen, and I've said it before, um, is we are all creatures of habit and we get very used to talking about us. But actually, with your social, the whole point is that it's social. You're supposed to be having a kind of virtual conversation. 
So actually think about the other side. Who is the other person? And what do you want to be sort of saying to them? So it's a bit more back and forth. Um, the other thing is as well is whether they trust you um, and understand what you have to offer. Sometimes um, you can be talking at a different level. So make sure that the tone that you're speaking to them um, in actually matches their, their level of knowledge um, of kind of the space that you're, you're in. Um, because sometimes, again, you could complete it. You might have to do it when you're content planning and when you're doing your sort of social updates with it as a, it's our beginner's guide. Or actually, here's for, you know, sort of established businesses that have been going for this long. Or actually, here you are, if you're long in the tooth, but you just want a roundup of stuff. You might use the same content, but actually just phrase it and position it in three different ways so that it actually meets those different audiences. Um, and also, what I'd say about this as well is how often do they hear from you? and whether that is actually how much they want to hear from you. So depending on whether it's a new customer or it's a prospect or it's somebody who's known you for yonks, um, they might actually not want to hear from you in the same amount of time. So when you're doing your updates, just have that in mind as well. Um, because I always think with social, you could you can waste an entire life on there. I mean, if I get onto YouTube, that's pretty much a day gone because I just find I'm looking at 80s 80s clips of TV and and videos things that I haven't seen for years but you know uh, never tear us apart in excess I mean I literally that took me down a rabbit hole that I just lost pretty much it felt like four months of a year in uh, you know so so you have to kind of think well okay I'm going to be strict with how much time I'm on here rather than just feeling that like you're giving everything because it is I think the easiest time suck out of everything and nobody wants to really you know hang around in their accounting package for, you know sort of that amount of time but actually you know getting onto social you can just it can just go the time can just go so when you're planning make sure you're strict about how much time you're spending on it and make sure that you're really focused um, on it as well and what I would say as well is if you know that something has really worked well and you're able to look at kind of oh I've got lots of likes or I've done this particular post and it's been shared lots that's the kind of content that you want to be thinking okay I need to be doing more of that um, so make sure that you kind of uh, keep it safe for your future ideas. So we talked in the past in some of these sessions about having like a future ideas, um, even if it's just a, a Word document and you just copy paste stuff in. But that's a really good thing to do, I think, for social so that you because it goes quicker than a lot of other marketing um, activity. So make sure that you've got a way of kind of sharing and saving things that you think are, are, are good. Let's talk a little bit then about us as businesses and the short and the long term. I went to a talk uh, a few years ago and the speaker was talking about Hugh Johnson from PepsiCo and they were talking about marketing and he quoted Hugh Johnson saying, any idiot can do short term, any idiot can do long term. The trick is to do both simultaneously. And what they mean by that is actually that sort of short term focused sales activity and the longer term brand activity. And it really resonated with me because I heard somebody saying it, but I'd never heard the quote before. And I thought, God, that's what we've been doing for years. <laughs> oh, good. This is great. But it actually fits into social really well. So what he showed this, and I, I thought this was just a really interesting sort of slide. But actually, if you think about over time, your short term sales are your almost like quarterly campaigns. And your longer term sales are your brand and your how people feel about your brand in the long term, the bigger things that you do, your story, the things that you, your ethics and what you're about and what it's like working with you. Whereas actually the one that's going up and down in red and the sort of shorter term is actually I'm pushing this particular promotion for these next three months or I've got this particular campaign running over the summer. So you're, you're trying to, when you're planning, I always think, and when we're doing kind of content planning, we're always thinking about both of those at the same time. The longer term activity, that sort of creates brand equity or that kind of a brand longer term loyalty. It has a, it's more about that sort of feeling of how you feel about working with a company. It can influence future sales. So it's not necessarily about stuff that's actually happening in this particular campaign that you might be selling. It's more emotional in its approach because it's telling you more about kind of the business and what they're about. And it's very much focused on that kind of brand awareness. The short term type of activity exploits how well you're known. So if you're already known as a brand, you're already quids in for the short term because somebody will already be coming to find you. So if I ask any of you now where you were going to go and buy a new jumper, 
you'd all probably have a particular shop that would just come to mind. That's because they've done really good long term work. And actually, you're already thinking, OK, that's where I'm going to go for short term sales. It generates sales in, in now. So in that kind of short term and it has persuasive messages. So actually, you've got a kind of real call to action of why you should get it. It's not something that's going to last and last. And it tends to be product or solutions focused or service focused. When we're thinking about kind of the content that we're doing and also with it, the social medias that you sort of push back for it, we're usually trying to get a balance of the long term and the short term as well. And a really good example of kind of the two approaches uh, is this Dove campaign. So on the left, you've got a very much a kind of Dove product. Here it is for kind of hair colour and the shampoo, and this is what's so great about it. On the long term, you've got their whole Body Beautiful, which was a campaign that ran. And, and actually, it's more about this is what women are about. It doesn't matter what shape or size or gender or colour or whatever you class yourself at. We're all gorgeous in all our different forms. So they, you can see that there's obviously a very different feel for both of them. One of them is actually, we're selling this product, this is what's going on. One of them is, this is who we're about and this is what we believe. And again, when you're telling your stories, you're trying to get a bit of both for those. So when it comes to our businesses, obviously we don't all have the budget of uh, the Dove brand. Uh, so what kind of things can you be doing? And I think sometimes this is where people get a little bit stuck because you kind of think, well, I'm doing this, I'm doing this event, for example, I've got stuff to say about that. And you can get very, if you're not particularly focused on sort of the longer term, you can get very um, lost in this is what I'm doing. OK, there's nothing particularly happening this month. So what do I say on social? What can I what can I tell about our company here on my wall? I have the uh, Global Goals for Sustainable Development up because I use these as a way of for inspiration, for kind of content for clients that we work with. It doesn't matter really what industry they're in, although obviously if they're in a nice industry, it makes it a lot easier. But basically, if you have a think of that kind of longer term, who you are as a business, what you're about, you can usually latch on to a bigger kind of global issue, something that is really important to you. So if I give you an example for Padua, we do, we've got a connection with ecology, where we basically try and do our carbon, our carbon offset. That's a key thing for us. We try and do lots of CSR, so we support the Minstead Trust in the forest, and we're one of the partners there where we help um, them with a as part of their kind of like um, partner package, uh, but we also then try and um, help where we can. So they did an art campaign a couple of months ago, um, and I ended up painting and selling a picture, which actually the money went to the charity and stuff like that. So there's different things that uh, I think there's sort of bigger issues that you can tie your brand to. Not necessarily just for a, here you are, this is who we are. It has to obviously have some meaning to you. And for us, those things, the actual learning side of things, we also do quite, I'm trying to do quite a lot of stuff with carers. Um, that also is a really, really key thing for us. So it gives you other things to talk about rather than just, this is what I'm doing today, or this is what I'm doing this week. And it also means that you've got kind of evergreen content, you're telling your story about your brand on a longer term, um, uh, yeah, sort of longer term. So that's, if you get stuck, I think actually sometimes that's where the gaps are. You can talk too much about kind of product and this is how much we cost, or this is who we help. You're not actually sort of saying what your brand stands for and the longer term and why somebody would want to work with you. And this is a good thing sometimes, I think, if you think, well, actually, what is important to us? You know, is it energy or is it climate action or is it actually do I want to should we do some kind of CSR project where we choose a charity? We do something with it. We get the staff all to raise some money. Quite a lot of people do things with like, um, oh, I've forgotten what it's called, the breast cancer awareness, where they do something with pink on um, usually in the in the year. But that gives you kind of then. It's stories to tell about what's going on, apart from actually raising the profile of the charity, which is always good. Um, you know, it also says more about your, your brand for that longer term. And then you've got what are you selling right now? So on the other side with your so you've got your customer things, what things do they want to know? Your longer term, this is what's important to us and this is what it's like working with us. And then you've got the short term. OK, what are we selling this this month or this quarter? And again, that I think sometimes people struggle with because and particularly if you haven't got a product and a service rather than actually you buy something, you put it in a bag and you take it away, it's quite hard to sometimes productize your, your offering. 
Um, but actually having kind of even just key times in the year, um, you know, sort of a special offer or actually you need to book by this time and you might get a discount or can really help you focus. Well, OK, what am I going to be saying? And I'm going to run this particular campaign for two months, um, you know, or a quarter and then there'll be a call to action for it. And you might find that there are different elements of your business that you can focus on. So, um, for example, for us, we do for um, small businesses, we do kind of different packages of time. And, you know, we did a Christmas offering um, and we will probably do something in the summer, you know, sort of as a kind of, you know, hopefully it'll be a summer offering and a summer love offering, I should think. We always try and do it as a, it's a giveaway or, you know, do a competition, see if you can do this, you know, sort of enter a draw and you might get kind of a free ses strategy session with us. Something like that. But again, it's tied into a period of time. It's tied into a sort of a bucket, if you like. Um, and you might only have three or four of those in the year, but at least it focuses and it means you've got activity that you keep coming back to. And that means that you've got those kind of like short term focus. This is what we do. But also then this is the bigger story of what we're about as as a as a business as well. And then lastly, um, I would think with those things in your like mixing pot, um, you have to look at the tone of social chatter. And at last uh, month's session, we talked a little bit about getting your tone right for dealing with kind of customers. But obviously with social, the whole point is that you, you want it to be shareable. You want people to like it and forward it on and become almost your brand ambassador or share a piece of content with it. That's what social is really good at. And so getting that tone right is quite a key thing as well. And we use um, a new tool for scheduling social for us and for clients. And it comes up with different ideas, which I think is hilarious because we used to spend quite a lot of time doing kind of national awareness days and actually what's about and it's when to care is week and it's mental health wellness awareness week this week. But these ones here, they, you can obviously see there's Vaseline Day on the 14th of May and who knew that there was an actual day about that? And sometimes you might find that actually you're, it, there's stuff there that has a synergy with it. Sometimes it might be just a bit quirky or a bit interesting that you think, yeah, okay, actually it's okay for my brand to be a bit, it doesn't have to be serious all the time. Or depending on your organisation, you might think, actually, no, I don't want to do any of that. They're all just far too daft and absolutely not useful and my customers won't be interested in them whatsoever. But it's getting that mix of making it so that actually all those things built together are interesting, kind of position you as being expert, but also have something about you so that people would actually share it or like it as well. So I think that kind of looking at your corporate toe, I've put it at the end, you could do that right at the beginning and actually think, yeah, we're not going to do that. Or we know that there's going to be these six weeks that we're really going to focus on because it's this charity and that means a lot to us. It's Earth Day, that means a lot to us. And so you can build things on. Or you might just decide, actually, there's certain elements of our business which actually are really interesting and, and it would be quite quirky to find out. So, for example, Anne might want to do the world's first Polaroid camera was sold on the 11th of May. But actually, who needs a Polaroid? You've got everything on your phone and happy days. We can make videos. Come and join our, our training course, for instance. So there's different things that you can do that fit in as well, extra stuff, all the little um, you know, sprinklings on top of other things that you can tie in. But fundamentally, when you're doing your planning for social, I would say if you get really stuck, follow those things and hopefully you'll get a real mix. And I will send around an example of a kind of a, one of our planners, but we do have a sort of focus on it. So we have the sort of customer focus, we have a kind of brand, we have a call to action so that actually it's easier to plot and put in there and you can see a you know month at a time and then if some of them you might be able to reuse some of them actually obviously you're redoing every month and the other thing as well just to say is depending on which channel your customers are on they there are different elements on that you can then build so you've obviously got those within your posts but also you can use for example on LinkedIn the personal articles where you publish them on your personal post and still pull those through and link them to your corporate page if you've got a corporate page on there as well and I think there are a couple of blogs about to go live on our site about how you might need help in case anybody needs help to do that the publishing stuff but so all of those things mixed in together hopefully will give you some updates for things to do and make it shareable not so me 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 but a real mix of things the next couple of sessions, just dates for your diary, on the 8th of June and the elusive other half of Padua Communications is actually going to do a piece on Google 
and updates the new algorithm. So that's June. And then uh, in July, we've got Alice Fewings and she's going to be doing a piece on LinkedIn. So all of you will hopefully find those two really useful. We're going to have a break in August and then September, the lovely Anne is going to be doing a piece on, yeah, using your phone for um, smartphone. Hopefully you will be able to come join those as well. I'll put the links in, but thank you and have a good rest of the week, guys. Thanks so much. Thank, thank you very much. much. Have a good Bye. Bye.